Earlier today, you, we were having this great discussion about how music making is, a is and always will be a communal thing. Mm -hmm. And the idea of like the person behind the screen or the person, even the solo person on stage with guitar is kind of a rarity. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to just kind of hear more about your thoughts on that. Mm. Mm. Um, I think that for me, the, 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 the setup of uh, live performance, music performance in general, it's something that I question. It's not something that I take for granted. Maybe that's what I want to say. The idea that I, um, you guys are sitting in the room, that most of the time I'm on an elevated space, that there is a, by default, imbalance in the dynamic because you know, most of the time people come see you, so or they might know things, and then they're an, a, a number of people, and they're also in the dark, and then you are here, you don't know who these people are, you don't, might not know them the way they know you, you're alone or not, not in the same amount of, so it, just that setup for me um, is not, something that I take for granted or that I find normal. Or I, it's like something I think about. Mm -hmm. Also the way that you use the space in a performance is so unidirectional. Mm -hmm. Like the way that we could be using the space, we're just using it literally in one mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, that's also something I, I think about. Um, um, and how to make things be more of an exchange, mm -hmm. which is not always um, easy. Mm -hmm. um, exchange but, between you and the audience. Yeah, like I think that by default there is, because of all the things I said, there is a gap between this and that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that a lot of the time, I, don't, I didn't necessarily do that tonight, but I try as much as I can to think about performance as a way to close the gap between that and this. Mm -hmm. And there's many ways, yeah. It's like when, when last time we were together and you played a performance, mm. you did a performance in Toronto mm -hmm. and like there was a group of mm. uh, people that you met up, you got, you arrived in the city early and found like a group Casted, yeah. and cast like some people that you, from not just from the city that yes. to get to know and to include in the performance. Mm. Um, really, what mm. what kind of what kind of uh, performance did they add? I mean, it was wild. Yeah, it was kind of wild, but <laughs> like singers, dancers. No, no, no. There no, was no. Ace I know it was like it was like nor like regular, not not artists. Oh, wow. Um, and what was what did you invite them to do? Hmm. I. I invited them to imagine. So we spent uh, two or three days just talking about um, That's great. just a few scenarios that I had mm -hmm. in my head and try to create the scenes and the feelings within that context. Mm -hmm. um, but then it became kind of like therapy, which I wasn't like, I don't know, I think that the the people, it was an interesting thing, was the people who, who, who answered to the call, mm -hmm. I think were already in a predisposition mm -hmm. of being like, I'm down for what I, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of openness because, you know, because it was so vague. Yes. It was just like, hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't like very descriptive. So I feel like already that invited people who needed something at this moment or wanted to experience something. Um, um, but the, yeah, it, it just went really deep, like really quickly. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, the idea was that they were, um, the, the setup for them was to, to, to inhabit what a, the arrival means, mm -hmm. the arrival in a setup where you actually have no idea what any of this is. Yeah. So not like aliens, but... Mm, more like, um, yeah, an, the, an arrival in a place that you have no context for. You've never seen this, you've never touched, you don't, you know. And they had to 
um, experience that and then be in contact with people and, cre and create contact with the people in the audience in that moment. So every one of them had a way of doing that. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty wild. That's, that's a a lot. So yeah, basically, it was like a lot. at a certain point, the music stopped and they all came out on stage and just kind of stood there yeah. and then went into the audience and started talking with people, like interacting with them, telling their stories. Yeah, very intimate stuff. At some points, some people were singing, but like they weren't necessarily singers or performers, but they were just kind of like expressing themselves. And it, people, the audience, I think, was confused because they were like, <laughs> did the concert stop? what is going on, but then they kind of like, their attitude shifted and they were kind of interested and it was like a, a way to kind of reframe the performance while it was happening and then like the next song started and it was like, oh shit, we're back, you know, it was a different, people had just like experienced something else within the space of the concert. Mm. I, yeah. I also, I, it's also because um, when you think of music history and like, and you de-zoom from Western and places and you de-zoom from the past 30 years, um, the function of music was so different from this, this. It was so much more communal, still is, extremely co communal and um, there's different kind of states that people get in. It's very difficult to be in any kind of state if you're sitting in a theater. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you know, um, I think that the, it, the, the, the chances for an experience to be cathartic if you're just sitting at a theater are close to zero. Um, so I, I think I'm also thinking about it because I, I want to reconnect with the ways that, I feel like not so long time ago it was still like that, so yes. I'm like, I don't necessarily find this a fertile way of, of doing it, you know? So it's like, I don't find it satisfying. I, I'm not sure it's satisfying for people either. When you look at, I don't know, there's like this um, uh, Moroccan band from the 70s. Uh, which? I, I'm blanking on the name, sorry. Nasser uh, Pivon. Huh? Nasser Pivon. Yes, exactly, so great. exactly, yeah. And so you have footage of them playing in like this arena and people so are just good. surrounded. And they just, I mean, they just get completely, it's not like, they're not just there to take, you know what I mean? They just go and clean themselves and they get into it's insane states. And then they have this container. The concert is like a container to uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, wash and uh, clean sure. and, and go high and come back and, you know. Um, and it becomes like a thing that can happen regularly in life. I feel like we don't, I don't have that in my life. Yeah, I don't yeah. have con containers for that. So I think that's why I'm yeah. thinking about it. That's this amazing documentary called Trances, 1981, the Nasuwan oh. film. Oh, it's, it's, it's about them. It's about them. Oh, and it, yeah. the, the, it has this concert footage I think you're discussing. Um, well, I want to say thank you so much. I know it's very strange to be performing yeah, in is. the moment, and then is, suddenly yeah. I'm like, suddenly the microphone, you know, the microscope comes out. So let's give a big round of applause for the fun guy.